Okay, one of the things I wanted to speak about in this video is sex and awakening. This is obviously a close one for a lot of people because it's one of our like top two desires, you know, is like food and sex and entertainment, or I, I don't know what the other ones are, but you know, it's something that is so close to us, but so many people, especially in the spiritual community, don't speak about this. I remember actually I was in a, I was part of a Buddhist group for a few years and, um, which was a great place, but you know, out of all the time that it was there, you know, one of the nights I'd go on Wednesday nights, every Wednesday night, and there'd be different discussions, different Dharma talks. And, um, you know, sex got brought up uh, as one of the, the topics one night. And you could feel it in the room. You could feel everyone sort of, uh, like, find it funny and they were giggling or some would get really embarrassed and cramp up. And it's such a, you know, it's it's such a big part of our experience and life. And it's such a, it's it's such a, you know, intimate Thing and personal thing, but we don't really speak about it, especially in, commu in in spiritual communities. You know, I've seen channels that will speak about it, like, um, you know, oh, you know, hold your seed, or, you know, activate your, your, your sacred masculine, and, you know, no sex, and, you know, you see online, like, articles, like, no fap, and semen retention, and so you've got that side, and then you've got the Muntok Chia side, which is like, you know, the tantric sex of like, oh, if you just, you know, sit there and do nothing and let your being take over, then, you know, you can, which you can, you can orgasm without actually ejaculating. It's like you have a, you have a body orgasm without actually, um, losing your seed as the, as the male. Um, so there's that side. And then there's the whole side, which a lot of the West partakes in, which is the, you know, your, your, pornographic side and your, your, you know, your, you know, your, your casual sex side. And I, I think there's, I'm going to say, and whatever I say in this and whatever I say in any of these videos, you don't have to take on or believe any of it, you know, take on what feels true for you. Or you can just say in the comments, I think you're full of shit. <laughs> so it's up to you. Um, but you know, there's that side of it, which, you know, is the, reality for a lot of people so I don't believe there's one right way or another and I think that's where we get very stuck and in this exploration of consciousness and who we are the worst thing we can do is get dogmatic right get dogmatic about which some people not everyone but some people do of of saying like you know oh you you have to be celibate and you know there's some traditions that say this and some teachings where it's like, you know, you, you know, you can't have sex. You, you have to be celibate. And I think that can be just as harmful as overindulging in sex because you're, you're suppressing your human sexuality and maybe for that soul's journey. And, you know, I've had a friend like this, um, probably, probably a couple of friends where, um, you know, they, they might not have experienced that in their life. And for their soul's journey, that's something that is a very strong, uh, desire. So, you know, I, I believe it's, it's finding what brings you the most peace, right? Something I'll tell from my story is I actually, a couple of years ago, as I started having, you know, big shifts in consciousness and I was awakening um, I, it wasn't, it wasn't the thing that did it, but I, I already felt like it before, but I, I did, I did ayahuasca a couple of years ago and, um, you know, it, I think that for me showed me the sacredness of so much in this human experience, you know, this sake, the sacredness in so much of this that people don't maybe see or realize and uh, sex was one of them. And I already knew that. I already knew of that before. And that's probably why um, I had realized that then. Because, you know, as a young, you know, Western uh, male growing up, 
you know, I I explored life and uh but you know in terms of that like I'd always feel after um you know like especially with porn when I was younger like oh you know something's not something's not right here like this there's something not right about this and I think that's why so many guys feel so much shame right and so it's it's very and what I'm saying now it's not it's not a black and white thing at all it's like being able to explore what feels most uh comforting and peaceful to your being so there's so much shame for a lot of people around sex right this whole thing of shame in our culture of like you know um oh, you, you can't do that or that's bad or like people you know even with casual sex, you know, feelings of, of regret. And I think a lot of it is, a lot of it is mind, is equally just as much ego and mind saying you have to suppress this part of yourself, you have to hide this part of yourself. Um, and so a lot of it comes down to, and I'm speaking about mostly, which I followed for quite a few years, the NoFap and uh, semen retention groups of like, oh, you know, I broke my, my two month, one month streak, you know, I'm, I feel like the absolute worst. And that's still the mind. That's still the ego, you know, creating a sort of identity around that saying, you can't do this. You're, you know, you're bad. And so I think we need to really just explore like, okay, what is this here for? Like, clearly it is a sacred thing and it was here which I realize it's here for procreation right which is the most hilarious thing because so much of us don't follow it in that way but if you just you know go out preaching oh you know sex is for procreation and now like no one's gonna listen to you they're gonna tell you to piss off so you know I don't think it's that black and white but I think you know it's finding that respect in yourself, right, of what feels most aligned with my being and what, why we love and, and the, the feeling of the, you know, the connectedness of, you know, this, this human experience is what, what, what brings, what makes people feel connected in that is the collapse of the me, right, when that happens is, we are flung into the being, into the present moment. And, you know, you can feel that all the time. And that's why people say, you know, when you hold your seed, you know, you realize that you are, because it's a life force, like you are that energy. So that can be really helpful. You know, if someone, I'm speaking more for the guys here, um, you know, women can be celibate as well. Um, you know, if you feel like you need to do that or you want to explore that, I'd say go for it and see how that feels. But if you're doing that and, you know, at one stage it, it did feel like this for me, if you're doing that and then it feels like, you know, you're suppressing part of your human sexuality, right? Because you've still got this desire in there. That can be just as, yeah, I think I said it before, but that can be just as harmful as... Um, you know, overindulging. So, um, it's really finding what works for you. Um, but it's, it's the sacredness, right? Of the masculine and feminine coming together. And that creates the union that creates the being. So this is what tantric practices speak about is, is the, the union and the, the Shakti being activated. Right. And so, you know, you can experience these states of, orgasm that are beyond ejaculating that are that you you don't have to um you know uh, spill your seed for and so i recommend looking into mantak chia um and yeah but also holding it lightly you know um yeah uh, doing what feels right for you okay so that was one topic the next i wanted to speak about was um, telepathy. So, how I see this now is, I find it 
well, I'm, I'm noticing more people are realizing this is a thing, but it's also quite funny how we all walk around without really knowing that we can sense and feel what others are thinking and feeling, right? All you have to do is, like, pick any situation. You're, you're waiting in the line for food or you're at the shops, and usually you can just tell by someone's expression or even a glance or, or anything just what is actually going on you, you usually the more instinct you have the more intuition you have the more you can you can feel this and this is what telepathy is but telepathy is knowing that you know we're all part of the one mind we're all part of the same one consciousness right and you know by by seeing yourself in that knowing that okay everything is this one consciousness everything is this one mind and there's just a perspective of it here there's just a localized perspective of it here but the one mind and what seems like these other perspectives outside of me are all part of this one consciousness then you're allowing yourself to be seen and heard right that's when the telepathy opens up more Uh, but then you can sense what others are thinking and feeling and so we'll be able to at some point we'll be able to just walk around without even having to speak you know we can have conversations without even using words and you know it's uh it's been uh, probably years ago people would say oh this is woo woo this is nonsense but um you know i think what's woo woo and nonsense now is actually some of the old out outdated scientific views that um you know, completely disregard um, the spiritual dimension and the deeper reality that is that this material world is just a little sliver of, is just an appearance of. Um, And, you know, science is now catching up. Science and spirituality are um, merging like they are. And, you know, quantum physics and, um, you know, neuroscience, they're all realizing that they have to catch up with the they have to they're they're seeing through their through their studies and what they're finding that they're seeing the reality of the spiritual dimension right of of reality beyond space time um so they're having to to catch up with this so yeah i just find it funny now i've had no one try well maybe a couple of people but i've had not many people really try argue this now because it's just not going to get anywhere saying that all there is is the material world and oh you know consciousness arises from um the material world and you know it's just the physical world and then where you know the lights are out no it's the material world arises from consciousness right everything is consciousness and this consciousness we speak about that's here right now is the non-physical. It's the being of you and me right now that is eternal, right? And is always, is, is dreaming, is dreaming this space-time world now. And all you need to do is explore your dreams for this. I have a lot of dreams now where it's like, in all my dreams now, I'm lucid. I know that I'm dreaming, but it's very fascinating. It's not even like dreams anymore it's just like I've had some amazing ones recently where it's like I'm you know it's like I'm I'm seeing the dream unfold and change within that and what I mean by that is like I'll explain one of them um for you one of them was like it was like this game I was playing with someone that was so the dream was this game right and it wasn't like your usual dream it was like we were in this game and it was different to this human reality and it was like this almost like a strategic game of of you had to get from the start of this level to the end of it right and it was I was playing with this friend or person and you know we were we were racing to this end point and as we got to the end point we had to you know the 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 rules like the game maker said you know one of you has to like 
fall off the mountain because it was like a flag on an island or mountain or something. One of you has to like knock the other one off. And, um, you know, one of us did. I, I think... I, I think I knocked the other one off, and then as soon as I knocked them off, the game ended, and then we both, it went from that game, so the reality of that game, which wasn't human, right, it was like when you play a Nintendo game, or it went from that to, like, waking up within that, and we were in the ocean, like, with our heads above the water, and it was more like a feeling of, like, whoa, we just went from that, believing that that was, we were in that, to like actually being here and there wasn't a sense of even though I'd pushed him off in the game there wasn't a sense of like oh you know that ended like I'd lost the character we just woke up into a new dream and so this this 3d space time world is no different you know it is it's not unreal it's very real but it's a dream of the one infinite reality of the one consciousness the one mind It's not woo-woo, you just have to go, you know, every tradition and religion, when you really get to the core of it, speaks about this. And, you know, there's lots of um, neuroscientists and scientists proving this now that, you know, um, space-time isn't fundamental. Um, You know, that we are all eternal spiritual beings or an eternal consciousness that is dreaming this perspective of you you know so you don't lose anything but this perspective but it won't feel like a loss so maybe i got a bit sidetracked there (laughs) we were at telepathy so yeah telepathy it's it's just going to it's so obvious that you know i experience this and i have friends that are open to this um and that's just one technology of so many that we have. Um, you know, a biolocation is one of like being able to actually, if you can actually be completely still, right? And, you know, be as conscious as you can and imaginative, you are able to, you still still be here, but you're actually able to just, you're able to go to locate somewhere else. And you won't appear there, even if there's other people, what it seems like other people there. It's like you won't actually appear there for them, but you will be able to travel around while you're still in the body. And so, yeah. Um, Okay, and then the next one was highs and lows, right? So, upon awakening and as we get more conscious we see that we don't anymore get so tied to and caught in feeling good and bad right so for many years and for all of us right we and it still happens here i just don't feel the effect of it we we get so caught in highs and lows right of like oh i'm really happy you know i got my raise or you know i met my dream partner and then you know three months later you're arguing and you break up and you know you lose your job and then you know you're you're drunk outside of a pub and you know you're you know it's like oh it's like woo 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 and then it's like a crazy roller coaster until that happens until you wake up and you just you don't want the roller coaster anymore right and so what's behind that roller coaster is your beingness when you know that there's there's the beingness of you which is this alive still energetic presence all the time it goes beyond the highs and lows you can still have highs and lows you you still obviously feel sad you still obviously have great moments but beyond that is a peace that never leaves you right and so you know i think this is the transformation of consciousness is realizing that there's an energy, there's a life force that we all are that is just what nature is and we can't do anything about it. But by surrendering to this life force and energy, you know, you're going to go beyond this duality of feeling good, feeling bad, being stuck in this circle all the time. And it's completely 
liberating and freeing and we're all on our way to that anyway it doesn't mean we're bypassing anything it actually and it means we actually feel more right we feel more because we're open to life and it's an energy right it's like maybe sometimes or at least here the 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 really happy or low moments we can feel they're needed in the human experience until you see that you don't need to go through that anymore because you have a beingness and love within yourself that transcends the highs and the lows, right? And that is the conscious awareness that we are, right? Is waking up to your being, to your eternal now, to your energetic presence and love that's here. So it doesn't matter what happens in form then, right? And you can live peacefully, and you can leave the body when you leave the body. And it's not going to be, you're not going to freak out. <laughs> because you know it's a continuous process. It's a continuous energy. So I would say, if you're feeling stuck, especially if you're watching these videos, I hope they're helping, whoever they're helping. But, you know, try, practice not watching some of these. And, you know, hopefully you don't need these videos or others that you're watching at some point um you know be brave and you know be brave yeah um don't do anything that puts you or others at danger danger obviously but be brave if you really want to push the scope of consciousness and what you're doing here if you really want to wake up you'll do that and i have done that pretty much you know, since I was 15, 16, but consciously since about 20 of like, I want to explore reality and I want to explore myself and you just need to want it. If you don't want it and you're okay, you know, you're, you're happy with the highs and lows and, you know, you, you don't feel much of a desire to like go beyond just, just your mundane everyday life then that is okay there's nothing wrong with that at all um but if you do if you're always suffering and, and questioning then you know be brave trust yourself and you know find what will what will increase you know the magnitude of of who you are what will what will really bring a telescope up and allow you to get the full full zoom you know so then you go aha you have those moments where you go aha and then you don't need the telescope anymore you don't need the aha moment because it's always the aha moment you are the aha moment maybe that's what i titled the video you are the aha moment <laughs> all right we've gone for quite a bit but yeah i hope you enjoyed see ya